You know, studying art, iconography, and religious imagery, it, it's taken on many different forms over the last few decades. Uh, nowadays, we can be looking at a lot of different types of images, and, and we never get to see the actual real painting or sculpture, whether it be in situ in Nepal or Tibet or Mongolia, or whether it's uh, in a far-flung museum on the other side of the world. We generally work with images, but uh, I just want to talk about one painting. And uh, to me, it's an interesting painting. It's uh, the sub central subject is Maharakta Ganapati. So it's the red Ganapati with one face and 12 arms. It's quite a popular subject within the Sakya tradition of Tibetan Buddhism. But we're not talking so much about, about Ganapati here. We're talking about the painting. So we're looking at a painting with the central figure of Ganapati and then with a, a number of side figures. At the top, we have the Buddha Ratnasambhava. Uh, and then to the sides and slightly below, we have uh, an array of characters that are not chronological. They actually... Um, it's sort of they're chosen, obviously, by the donor of this painting. The, the person who commissioned this painting likely selected the figures. One of them is an Indian named Durjaya Chandra. Another one is a Kashmiri uh, uh, Pandita. Then we have uh, four Tibetans, uh, three monks and one layperson. Um, so, and they're not, at, they didn't live at the same time, uh, all of them. They were, they were different. But then we have on the uh, slightly below to the left, we have a form, a special form of Vajrapani with one face, four arms. On the right hand side, we have Chakrasambhara, the major meditational deity. Uh, then below that, on the left, we have Vaishravana. Below that, we have the female wealth deity Vasudhara. At the very bottom, we have the Pishasi sisters, the Yugu Chesum. On the, at the middle right, we have Aparajita, and the lower right, we have Yellow Jambala. So these are all wealth deities. The central figure of Ganapati is, uh, is a power deity, um, but also power and wealth go together. Now, what I think is interesting about this painting is prior to putting it on the Har website around 2000, 2001, um, I believe it's only really been published once uh, prior to that because it was included in an exhibition at the Guimet Museum in Paris. Now, before that, I'm actually quite familiar with this painting because as a, as a young teenager in the early 70s, I actually had a paper poster of this painting in my bedroom for my entire high school career. And that paper poster had no information on it. It, it. Yes, it has the Tibetan inscriptions on the front, which were a little slightly legible on the poster, because it's a large format poster, but the back had no information. I didn't realize until years later that the there was an, uh, a European gentleman, an associate of uh, Kumar Galleries in New Delhi, Lal Kuan, uh, New Delhi, and uh, the Kumar Galleries had allowed this European fellow to take photographs of a number of, uh, of Tibetan and Nepalese paintings and to make posters out of them. And so I acquired uh, one of these posters uh, very soon after it was it was. Uh, uh, published and made available, so that's the late 60s, early 70s, and so I am I am quite familiar with this for for over 40 years, but I have never seen the painting. I have never read all of the inscriptions in detail because I wasn't sure if there were some inaccuracies or or it was um, uh, faded. I wasn't sure about the letters because of the quality of images that I had. The the image on the Har website is a photograph I took 30 years ago of the poster. And then we put that image on the Har website in 2000, 2001. So what, I, what I'm doing here is I'm just um, sharing with you that, that uh, 
often we never see the art that we're talking about. We're, we're working from uh, published black and white uh, photos in, in catalogs. We're working from color images. Sometimes we're working from transparencies. And then we're working from digital images. So this painting of Maharakta Ganapati is one that I'm hoping to be able to see very shortly and to put better images up on the HAR website with all of the front inscriptions, which are quite interesting. They're not overly informative. They're just interesting because they're descriptive of each of, of the figures and groups of figures that are uh, inhabit the painting. So it's always... Uh, important just to be aware of, of um, how wonderful it is when you can actually see art and, and you're not uh, just only able to see the, the um, published versions, but to actually see the paintings or see the murals or see the sculpture uh, firsthand. So if you enjoy this video, then press the like button. You can subscribe. You can also join Har on Patreon and help us to support the work that we do.